it plays with your mind because you, you kind of want to get closer you want to get there but equally like you're taking everything in at the same time and then finding the lines on the gravel was fun at times because yeah um, avoiding the washboard avoiding the washboard is quite hard at t so you kind of like constantly feel like you're veering all over the road yeah. but the road's huge it's like oh yeah a wide wide road We went cycling in the Namib Desert of Namibia, on the southwest coast of Africa, and considered the most ancient desert of all. A pat is a, comes from, from Dutch, I guess, Afrikaans. Pat mean, meaning, meaning road. Could be paved road, could be tarred road, we just call it. Every road is a, is a pat, is a road. So you call it a gravel road, gravel pat. We are in Namibia. And everything that you see behind me over here is like black rhino country. So these black rhinos, they have adapted to live in the harsh conditions in the desert. And also you can find uh, desert adapted elephants in these ephemeral rivers. We passed through on today, uh, the Uchab already. And then a little bit further northwest from here, there's another uh, river called the Huap. There are very few things that hold as much cultural significance in Namibia as cattle. Uh, to some people cattle are holy, to almost everyone cattle are really, really important. It's like how many heads of cattle someone has is, is a real sign of their, their worth. Hello from Namibia. I'm out here with Helen and we're wrecking a 10 day route. Test the hummus. <laughs> I am Leander, Nature Friend Safaris from Namibia. We are in Namibia now. We're busy uh, wrecking a trip for glorious gravel. The land of wide, wide open spaces, lots of gravel, thousands of kilometers actually. We're about, on the first day now, we're about 60 k's from Wintook, I think, or 70 k's from Wintook. Let me just get decent here. <laughs> Where are we? Uh, in a very hot place. <laughs> we're tired now, we're on the top of Gamsburg, which is a pass that goes down, through the longest pass in Namibia. Uh, about 20 k's, just downhill, going ah! So that's where we are now, you can see this is sort of a Komas Hoch, Hochland here. Lots of mountains, no people, gravel roads, heat and space. Enjoying the riding, Helen? It's amazing. It's hard though. <laughs> Harder than I thought it would be. So... Th it's, it's easier than I thought it would be. Really? The, I thought the washboard would be way worse. Okay, no, that's true actually. The washboard isn't too bad. I think maybe I'm just taking a bit of time to acclimatise to the heat and the... and the pace is probably a bit fast for me. <laughs> then 38. Tyres wouldn't have been good. Those would have been terrible. You really need ab absolute minimum 45 mil, I think. Because you or a mountain bike. Or a mountain bike, yeah. Like, like 50 mil if you can. You can rent some good ones out here. Definitely, definitely. Just for the smoother ride. Yeah. You, feel, you feel like you're like on a cushion almost. Yeah. <laughs> Traditional. It's <laughs> called babuti. Babuti? Mm -hmm. It is lasagne. Okay, it's lasagne. Yeah. It looks like babuti. <laughs> It's not Babuti. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> yeah, don't get that wet. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. How does that feel? It's amazing. Is it cold? No, it's like perfect. It's exactly what I wanted. <laughs> what happened around midday? It got hot. <laughs> Super hot around midday. Um, there was no cloud cover, there was no shade pretty much anywhere. So I've been drinking absolutely loads today, like way more than I would normally. Like I said, there's no shade anywhere, so you just have to keep riding and then you can maybe find a tree. <laughs> we found like one or two trees to try and find a bit of shelter underneath to stop and refill and resupply. Um, but yeah, it's intense heat. Um, today, it started off super fast, like the fastest gravel I've ever ridden on. I think what's special about Namibia is that um, it's a good, good combination, Namibia's got a combination of, of first world where everything works um, and third world, you know, the, the way you maybe expect Africa how it was 100 years ago. We are the least populated country on earth, second least actually. But we've got lots of space, uh, lots of wildlife, um, 
endless, endless hundreds of thousands of kilometers of, of, of riding, beautiful landscape like this. Um, it's safe, uh, we don't have a lot of traffic and then to be able to see, I think we saw today giraffe, we saw oryx, we saw smaller antelope, bush pigs, warthogs, all sorts of things. So that's it's quite, a, quite a treat to see wildlife while you're cycling. I'm riding Hutchinson Tuareg 50mm tyres. There's uh, plenty of clearance front and back, and yeah, soft, soft and supple. Helen scared me a little bit on some of the downhills because we were, we were going down pretty fast, and then like on some of the bends, it's like very loose gravel and we were going around and Helen's banking as if she was on a road almost and then going really wide in the corner I was like watching from behind with my GoPro in my mouth just like what <laughs> am I just am I so we did a first aid course um last week I was like am I gonna have to use it this early <laughs> I stayed on my bike yeah <laughs> thank goodness luckily skills obviously. no first aid was needed My name is Mark Bessingthoit. I'm one of the guides for this recce trip of glorious gravel. Uh, this morning we were meant to go to Sauces Flay to check out the dunes, but I think uh, Josh is going to do that for himself next week. So we decided to come straight away from Rostock Ritz all the way to Swakopmund, where we are now. That's on the coast, little town, a little German town. And uh, we've decided to come uh, a little bit early so we can recce some of the routes that we can ride here. So we've decided to do one of the nice little uh, flowy trail ones. We've got a couple of various length trails around here. We can do a long gravel road, 110 k's all the way through the moon landscape that's going to be behind Josh who's filming at the moment and then coming along the desert dash route along the riverbed actually uh, but now we are a little bit north of the Swakop river and uh, trying to see if we have a, like a medium loop but we also have a short fun loop which is pretty much just a nice single track flowy single track for those uh, that just want to take it easy and uh, have a bit of fun This morning we started, uh, well we actually started in Swakopmund and then we went up to Henty's Bay um, and jumped out of the truck and got onto our bikes 
and we were really cold. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that, to be honest with you, because um, it's the summer here, so and we've been really, really hot the rest of the time. Heading back into the desert on day three of riding here in Namibia, uh, about doing 125k. Yeah. How's it feeling, Helen? Just getting warmed up. It was 17 degrees, which um, I think if I was in Mallorca, I'd actually quite enjoy 17 degrees, but um, it felt really cold, so we put our jackets on for about 20 minutes. Um, and then as soon as we started riding, yeah, we got quite warm quite quickly. And uh, it was nice, kind of really smooth, almost like a tar road when we started, but then it turned into like full gravel. Um, and then uh, we were in the, was it the Durab National Park? Yeah. Um, but the, like it, everything is so vast, but the scenery also changes quite quickly. So, you know, the road is long and it just keeps going before you, but then there were sort of mountains in the background that you were heading towards that never seemed to get close and then suddenly you were there. No, it's like 70k before we actually got. Yeah. Like, like we kept on thinking, oh, they're going to be soon. Yeah. And it was like 70k before we got yeah, there. Yeah, which is just mad because you just kind straight, of. Straight, straight roads. Straight, straight roads. You can just see it for miles and miles and miles. So it kind of like. It plays with your mind because you, you kind of want to get closer, you want to get there, but equally, like you're taking everything in at the same time. So, um, so yeah. And then finding the lines on the gravel was fun at times because yeah, um, avoiding the washboard, avoiding the washboard is quite hard. At so you kind of like constantly feel like you're veering all over the road. Yeah. But the road's huge. It's like oh, yeah. a wide, wide road. And yeah. we, we didn't see. We saw about maybe less than ten cars the whole way. Yeah, I would say so. It's like not busy at all. And then we saw some of the um, the guys doing the road. What are they called? I've forgotten. The graders. The graders. That's it. So we saw them actually doing it. So um, like making it smoother for us, which was nice for some of the sections. Yeah, and then it got hot. And then, my goodness, I think it got up to about 40 degrees. Yeah, it was, it was like it was hot, hot. crazy hot. There was a bit of cloud cover, which was nice. And then, yeah, now and again, you got a bit of respite. Yeah, and, then and a bit Two of minutes, breeze. and then it just like, bang, again, hot. Yeah, it's just insane, like the heat, and you just, your mouth gets really dry. And you're drinking, 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 and you still feel like it's really dry. Yeah. So. It was, it was lovely having the, the car behind us, and we oh, could yeah. just stop, get a Coke. Definitely. And then continue. And then a nice jump in the pool when we got to the, the camp. <laughs> that was fun, right by um, the rock. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm gonna forget the name again. It was it Spitzkopper? Spitzkopper, that's it. Yeah. yeah, right by Spitzkopper, which in itself just looks it's, yeah, stunning. Stunning, absolutely stunning. It just Little, appears out of the desert. Yeah. Like out of a mirage. Good day on the bike. Well, another awesome day, yeah.
Nice to get out of the sun. Mm. It's just getting hotter and hotter and hotter gradually. Don't do anything, I'm fine. We're fine. We're, we're happy with that. Yeah. They, yeah, they look a bit more like midges, don't they? Yeah, you look, you look closely, they are like bees. Oh, I can't really need one to land. Let's take a look. Ready? Yeah. Uh, the Damarala people, they are descendants or believed to be some descendants of the Bushman people because they also have that click sound. Not as intense as Bushman people, but um, together with the Nama, the Damarala, they speak very similar languages, they can understand each other. The Nama people are a little bit more south of Namibia, the Damarala people are northwest. And uh, a little bit more pale skin, not very dark people. Um, yeah, so they've been living here for many, many years already. Yeah. We have left Uis, Uis Elephant Guesthouse, this morning, uh, which is like sort of the start of the Damara land. We are now in the heart, almost in the heart of the Damara land. We are going to go all the way to Korichas. Korichas, that's how you spell it correctly. And um, that is actually the heart of Damara land people. And everything that you see behind me over here is like black rhino country. So these black rhinos, they have adapted to live in the harsh conditions in the desert. And also you can find uh, desert adapted elephants in these ephemeral rivers. We've passed through on today, uh, the Uchap already. And then a little bit further northwest from here, there's another uh, river called the Huap. Uh, we're not gonna go there. Um, but that's also where desert adapted elephants can be found. In good rainy seasons, these elephants can roam all over the place here and occasionally you can even find elephants on the road that we have taken. But now there's not enough water, they will rather skip to the, uh, stick to the riverbeds where there's uh, fountains here and there and also man-made water wells so the ele elephants can survive over there. That was awesome. I'm absolutely spent now. How far did we go? Uh, 118k and I'd say probably about 98% off-road or maybe 95% off-road and uh, we uh, have quite a lot of sand and lots of washboard. washboard again so picking your line you're like constantly constantly focusing trying to pick your line and then as we carried on like the day just got hotter and hotter and hotter so and then you get a few little rollers and you're uh, your mind starts playing tricks on you. Seeing rhinos. We just cycled through Waterberg Wildlife Preserve and uh, Helen and Mark were just chased by rhino and a calf. We were told on the way in there may be rhino. We saw loads of termite mounds and uh, in between the termite mounds were two rhino. So that, that was interesting. Did you enjoy getting chased by a rhino? Um, I didn't look behind me, I have to admit. I just kept going. Last day in Namibia? Yeah. How's it been? It's been absolutely awesome. Such an amazing trip, like the whole thing. It's been a whistle stop tour, but we've crammed in so much. Amazing riding, amazing landscapes, amazing wildlife, scary wildlife encounters. <laughs> <laughs> but we lived to tell the tale. <laughs> we didn't really, um, so last night we were walking back from a hike up to the top of the Waterberg escarpment. Is it like? And uh, we coming back into town, the zebra snake was 
uh, just on the ground, me and Helen oblivious to the danger, and Mark, the ever, the ever calm Mark, was just like, get away, get away! <laughs> Thank you.